Committee um, will at two minutes after nine, and please stand. Ms. Councilor Taylor is going to give the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to together here today. We thank you for the safe trips that have been made. We pray that you will be with us as we enter into these meetings. Let us be forever mindful of our responsibility to our Cherokee citizens. We pray that you will give us traveling mercies as we go home. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Denise. Yes, ma'am. Ani. Joe Bird. Joel Anglin. Harley. East Austin. Here. Harley Bazard. Here. Sean Crittenden. Mike Dobbins. Frankie Hargis. <coughs> Wanda Hatfield. Ahani. Rex Jordan. Here. Big Ledge. Here. Mike Shambaugh. Here. Mary Baker Shaw. Ani. E.O. Smith. Here. Denise Taylor. Here. Brian Warner. Ani. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Does everyone have a chance to look over the minutes and kind of get a motion for those? I make the motion. Second the minutes is written. I second. Thank you. Motion second. All right. Good. All righty. Reports. Uh, I was told uh, Molly Jarvis and her team cannot be here today, so we'll just let her cultural tourism report stand unless there's somebody that did show up from cultural tourism. I don't think there is. Okay. So we'll move on to Roy Boney and John Ross language program. This is always good to hear. Roy always has good stuff to say. I got a couple of announcements to start off with. Uh, last week was the Intertribal Council meeting in Thackerville. Uh, our language work group uh, put in a request for funding for our annual language summit. It, it was approved. The language summit will be held at NSU on April 18th and 19th. Uh, the theme for this year's summit is engaging families. So a question that we have a lot of time is how do we get our families involved in learning language too? You know, we focus a lot on, you know, children learning and adult learning. How do we get everybody involved in this in the community? Uh, the keynote speaker is Daryl Baldwin. He's from the Miami Language Program, and he's a 2016 MacArthur Fellow. Uh, we're sharing his, he, he, uh, he's a keynote speaker at the NSU Symposium, too, so we're sharing him for both uh, events. We tried to get him last year, but we, we got him this year, so we're happy about that. Um, <clears throat> you know, Durbin Filling, you know, he retired last year from the language program, but one of his last projects that he had with us was, uh, he's working on a book uh, called Cherokee Narratives of a Linguistic Study. That book was released earlier this month through the University of Oklahoma Press. Yeah. Uh, it's available through them directly or through Amazon and other booksellers. It's uh, $29.95, but the book itself is a collection of uh, Cherokee stories. Some are jokes, some are traditional stories, some are just like, you know, community stories. But what Durbin did is uh, the translated in the Cherokee, or most of them were, were in Cherokee to begin with, but he uh, translated them as a straight translation, then it did a more of an English gloss with it, and then they added a linguistic analysis of every one of them. So it's a very in-depth book about the Cherokee language, so it's a very uh, unique book too. So if you can get it, we recommend people to get that book. What's, excuse me, Roy, what's the name of that book again? It's called Cherokee Narratives, A Linguistic Study. Thank you. In addition to that, Durbin is also, you know, he's retired, but he's still working, so. <laughs> Uh, he has another project he wants to do. It's he has a draft of it already. It's a, a Cherokee verb book. He's done one in the past, but he has a new one that he wants to do. So we're talking with him about possibly publishing that through the Cherokee Nation. So we hope that maybe that will happen. We're excited about that as well. Um, um, another front here, uh, OCO TV. You know, every, every season they have the Let's Talk Cherokee segments. Uh, <coughs> This coming season, Lawrence Panther will be the voice of the language lessons. Uh, he's been working with the kids. They did a, a filming last Friday. They got some more to do, but they'll be coming up this coming season. And with the show going weekly, we had to do a lot more uh, lessons this time around. Uh, our Speakers Bureau meeting was last week, uh, but because of the weather, we had to let out early, but I, people still enjoyed what they could. They had some chili and crackers there. So. <laughs> And uh, finally, uh, our Cherokee language community class schedule is uh, currently being worked on for 2018. 
Uh, most of our classes usually start in late February and run through uh, through summer, so we'll get those finalized pretty soon. In addition to that, Ed Fields is going to start doing his language adult immersion classes pretty soon at various places across the 14 counties. So with that, that's my report today. Thank you. You all are busy. Yes, questions. Councilor Taylor. I have a couple. Um, from your report under accomplishments, uh, number five, Cherokee language teacher training scholarship. What, what exactly is that? Uh, we have a scholarship in which we pick five students to go to NSU. Uh, if they're going to pursue a degree in Cherokee language education, uh, we pay for everything. It's okay. a full ride scholarship. Oh. Okay, and then on number seven, it says uh, we <coughs> met with the Native Language Community Coordination to talk about Cherokee teacher certification at the Oklahoma State level. Is this the certification that a teacher has to pass in order to? teach Cherokee language in the classroom? Yes. Okay, I'm glad you're doing that because my understanding from talking to different people is that it would be hard for a first language speaker to pass that test and that the mm -hmm. test is not written by people that actually, people like yourself that actually are um, immersed in the language and, and know it. So I'm glad to see that there's a conversation going on there to make it a little yeah, more it, realistic. It needs to be fixed. Uh, it was developed about 10 or 12 years ago now, and at the time they thought it would be a, uh, a way to get a lot of certified teachers, but it's been a kind of a barrier. Yes. So we need to revise what we have on, on file here with the state. Okay, so. awesome. That's all I have, Victoria. <clears throat> Thank you. And in that, re in that regard, I have a, a teacher at um, Adair that asked about that. I think it was a principal that asked if we could have a, a teacher there or he has a person that wants to do it, but would I have him contact you if he's got questions about it? Yeah, yeah, I'd okay. be happy to talk to him. Okay. <clears throat> Other comments or questions? Uh, yes, Sean. Um, sir, on the scholarship, uh, is that five per year or? Uh, we do it every other year. Every we try to stagger year. it out. So, you know, we're getting these people going through the their education, and when they come out, they're supposed to be guaranteed a, a job with Cherokee Nation. So. Now, do they fill up every time? No, they don't. We have a hard time filling that, actually. Like, like this this past year, how many took advantage of that? Uh, we finally got five for the first time. Uh, the scholarship hasn't been around too long, though. I think it's in its third year, I think, now. And uh, they just have to go, and they don't have to be fluent Cherokee to sign up. And no. They just have to agree to go through the courses and yeah, yeah. graduate. Yeah. And in addition to the schoolwork, they spend 15 hours a week or more in the language with our staff. So it's a pretty good Amazing. opportunity. I, I, I like that. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Yes, Harley. And uh, Roy, I've heard the same thing. And my question is, have we had anybody that is fluent in Cherokee take this test to, to get certified? That doesn't uh, actually pass the test? Because I've heard several that said they've taken it and there's no way that they could pass it. Yeah, I know there have been a few, like at immersion, a few <coughs> the teachers have, but not many. And some had to take it more than once, too. Yeah, actually. I've heard that there's only like two or three that yeah. didn't even pass it. And, and the people that have taken it really were pretty fluent in Cherokee language. It, it's just so difficult. But I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad Wade is checking into this here because I've had yeah. several questions about it all. Yeah, we have to fix well, it. Keep, keep us up to date for yeah. the week. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, comments or questions for Roy? Roy, is uh, Northeastern giving us a good deal for utilizing their their facilities? Yeah, they, they're really open now to working with us. Uh, you know, we had kind of a rough patch there for a little bit, uh, but I think now they're really open to anything that we really want to do. They're really uh, focused on language now. And with the scholarship, and especially we're trying to work with them to with this state certification process too, to make sure we have a really good uh, a path to get everyone through this and uh, they're willing to work with us to change what we need to get changed to. That's great. Who's our, who's our contact person there? When you're going to utilize that facility like you're doing, I know, do you go through some like the chief of staff like Ron Cambiano or do you just call the facilities person? Uh, usually it's Ron. It was uh, Dean Bridgman. Yeah, Ron's pretty really good. Ron yeah. understands. He's on, I think he's on the Heritage Board, isn't yeah, he, Dr. Yeah, okay. Well, good. 
I, I don't know who replaced Dean Bridgman at NSU yet. Though. I know someone has, but I don't know who that is at the moment. I have a question about the back on the first thing we talked about, the language symposium, April 19th and 19th. Mm -hmm. If a counselor was were going to visit that, what, is there a particular day that's better to to come uh, and just see what's going on? Or I would say probably the first day. That's when the keynote is too. The entire event is free, but we do have a luncheon that costs and that helps to raise funds to put the event on. Could you, uh, if have you planned or will you send an email to Gail so that we can all be copied in? Yeah, I'll we send, could, send your one. That yeah. we could be invited to that. I would like to come and hopefully my schedule will allow. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much for right. a very well, good report. Else? All right. Let's see who's up next in the hot seat. <laughs> Rob Doherty. Oh, he loves the hot seat. <laughs> He did, didn't he? <laughs> Seal with the God. Seal. Oh. It is cold. We're in cold weather, folks. Uh, you have your report, uh, one pager. That's unusual for us, but huh. since we've split the community uh, report that was given yesterday and and the cultural, not too much, uh, not too much action in terms of the culture. There are still meetings, uh, but cultural presentations, so forth, and usually December and January. Uh, it's been customary practice that, that we hardly don't ever do any presentations because of the travel. A lot of the old folks, older folks in the community, the travel and so forth. But uh, this is um, this is a synopsis of a, a recent graduation exercise, our language program you can read and so forth. Uh, they graduated, uh, they graduated uh and started a brand new class uh just recently i think they're only in about two or three weeks into the new class uh mr payton uh is inviting all the council members as usual they recently moved now they're located yes we don't have that report uh -huh. you don't have that report i'm wondering if it was attached to yesterday's yesterday was it yesterday that was one yesterday. You that. Yeah, that was a community. I'll have a okay. 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 That'd be awesome. Okay, let me. Uh, the uh, the Cherokee Language Master Apprenticeship Program has moved. Now they're located where the Attorney General's office was upstairs in a court mall mm -hmm. above uh, above the Kawi Cafe. They're up there now, and uh, they've got a brand new group. Uh, quite a diverse group. Um, to give you an example of the interest in the language, there's a person taking classes right now with a PhD. Uh, this is the only way I'm going to learn the language. This person has a PhD, obviously, something that uh, this person wanted to do, and a couple of people with master's degrees. So the the uh, selection of, of the the new people in their uh, language, the apprenticeship program is pretty diverse. We have some community people. We have some people. We've received Howard and Ryan, and in our office, we received phone calls from people in California who actually want to move here so they could be so they could participate in this program. And, and, and of course, they have to take them through the criteria, the process. They have to be selected. You just can't can't just move here <laughs> and be into the program. So it, it is uh, it is something that they're they're asking everybody to do, uh, asking council members, special council members, come and visit. Make sure you call first though, because they've uh, initiated uh, have been for a little while. Some of the elderly people in the communities that they want uh, the students to go talk to because of the diverseness of the southern Cherokee and uh, northern Cherokee. If there is if there is uh, colloquialism, I guess you would call it. Um, they go to them, so they do travel. Every once in a while, they'll have a community day. They'll go visit two or three different sites where there are speakers, and they'll take the students there uh, to do so. So uh, we encourage you to visit, because uh, I know you're probably, if not already, getting phone calls about the uh, MLAP program. You'll know a little bit more about it, and, uh, and some of the students are from your respective districts that you represent. So this is quite a... <coughs> uh it's uh it's the new classes start up i think they're in the second or third week so you're going to catch them right in time where they're brand new fresh and so forth uh i wanted to uh, bring your attention to um to the in district and the at-large cultural and history presentations 
that's going to be included into the insert in the upcoming on a disco e magazine huh. uh, the secretary wanted uh, uh, Miss Squirrel and Miss Gray to go all the way through September up until the new fiscal year at least uh, have down what in district and uh, what uh, places at that large where the presentations will be and one of the things that Miss Squirrel did say was she'll probably be calling some of the uh, some of the districts in district especially having a difficult time finding a place to have these cultural presentations so they may call up on you all to see if there's any facility that could be used uh, most of these presentations cultural are anywhere from 45 by the time they finish and everything two hours at length so she may be calling on she's having a difficult time trying to find some places here and there so uh, with those with those locations that she's having difficulty she may be calling on you all uh, for a place to if there's anything that we as Cherokee Nation if there's any buildings that we have or any libraries that will give it to us for free of charge <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and that's it that'll be an insert in the on a disco e magazine coming up it's supposed to be coming out this month I think at the end of the month, I think. what does that word mean Rob on a disco that's what they say on a disco e it, it just means that's what they say I just so, wanted you to clarify that oh, okay that's a good word and the, yeah it is a good word it's just it just simply means that's what they, that's say. What they say so when you read something that's coming from the community is what they're saying and the stories that are included in that that's a unique word on the disco e. that's everybody not just one community or just one person on the disco it puts it into a, a communal type sense for the whole nation well if any uh any questions that I could uh, feel? I'm sorry that it wasn't included in there. It's a right. one pager. You have it's it a now. Good report. Very good report. <coughs> oh, well, well done. I like that magazine. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Ooh, God, I'm these you are done. Stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. I believe it's now Charles Gord's turn. <laughs> Did anybody time uh, Rob's presentation? I don't want to go longer than him and be uh, attacked by the speaker for talking too long. <laughs> you have lots of time because... Oh, yeah, that was it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the clock's already ticking. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk with you again about uh, what I think are the exciting things and interesting things that we're getting done over at the Heritage Center um, during our two-week... Um, we closed down and uh, worked with the staff we've came up with uh, what I think is a very comprehensive and thorough strategic plan we have some general goals and objectives of course our first one is to support the mission to of the Heritage Center and then also one of the things we really want to take a look at and work closely with CNB and the council and everybody else is the perceptions of the Heritage Center as a world-class point of destination so that's what we need to take a look at at present each one on the staff in charge of the education programs the village we're looking at what our actual cost factors are when we have the different education programs. The schools come there. We do our outreach programs in all of the schools so that we can get a real good handle on our cost, our benefit, and uh, analysis, and especially our impacts. So that should be done by the end of this month and then the board retreat they will take a look at our strategic plan and then we want to present that in the february probably the february meeting to the full council so that you guys will know exactly what it is we're looking at what we're wanting to do when we're going to do it and get a, a better idea i think of some of the cost factors involved in the maintenance and operation of a true world-class facility um, i have met uh, both in staff and uh, personally with 
representatives from the USDA, the forest resources, we're getting real close to having uh, a good project nailed down to where we can look at all of our 44 acres and come up with a full site plan and not just be restricted to those areas that we're using at present. I'm going to model that after the program at the Lead Lodge, which is up in Nebraska City. It's ran by the Arbor Day Foundation, and they have learned permanent learning stations out in the woods. So you go one area, there's uh, physical activities, one area is for storytelling, we have one for animals and plants, and they have art in the woods. It's really a fantastic uh, resource that they have. Uh, we've talked to them about essential community facilities, and also in reference to the uh, plans that we're going to have for self-sufficiency, there are programs in rural development uh, through the USDA that uh, by working with the uh, state folks, we've now gotten <coughs> most of the Cherokee Nation, but in particular Cherokee County, designated as an eligible county by the demographics and uh, income guidelines and stuff we worked out. Uh, Western Oklahoma, the economy is not good enough for an investment by USDA. So, uh, you know, we really worked strongly with them to make sure that especially the areas of the Cherokee Nation are included in eligibility for these. Um, we have folks coming next month from the National Park Service that were going to try to be here November, December, and that didn't work. We need to redo the Trail of Tears exhibit. I want to make sure that when these people come here from the initial discussions that each person on the council is aware of when and where the meetings are the items the issues that are discussed because I would I was asked specifically if we're restricted in space in the museum and I said no because the exhibit that's there has been there for 20 years uh, most of the technology doesn't work and you couldn't get parts to fix it even if you wanted to. So we have an opportunity because the next exhibit that goes up as the designated end of the Trail of Tears, we might as well figure is going to be there for 20 or 30 years. So we need to make sure that it's done right. And there's only one way to do it and, it, and that's in partnership. I want to include the Trail of Tears Association to make sure because you know each there's a state chapter and they have all of their you know there's just all kinds of I think exciting and fascinating things that we can do again which will lead to make that making the Heritage Center a world-class destination point I think the major thing the major theme the major point we are totally uh, not ignoring but not making a, a strong statement is the pillars from the female seminary. To me, that is significant because we were the first government to formally educate females <coughs> at the college level. And that was the first college level institution west of the Mississippi River. There are things we need to do around that theme which promotes the uh, very progressive and very, to me, intellectual and educational uh, things that the Cherokee Nation has done in the past and it continues to do in the present that we're not letting the world know about. Um, <coughs> uh, we are in the process right now of doing some renovations within the museum. We're taking up the carpet and putting in wood floors and all that. This is what uh, Cheryl has car continually carried on our books as deferred maintenance. I'm a maintenance type person. You take care of what you got before you go around asking for new toys. So we are in the process of, uh, you know, major cleanup, fix up, paint up. Again, that's presentation because when people come here and they look at that place, they think that all turkeys are like that. And I want them to have a good impression and a good opinion. Um, I want to thank especially the Marshal Service. They came out and did an Alice <coughs> training for us. And we're going to have additional types of training specifically too because we have 
tremendous numbers of public schools and children there on different occasions. So we have to have an emergency plan in case of some, you know, some person going crazy or a tornado or a storm or whatever. But the Marshal Service has stepped up and has uh, done as a part of our staff training and will continue to. So we will have a full, complete emergency plan for the Heritage Center. Um, the Cultural Tourism Department uh, for our staff training, one of the things that we need to be doing is supporting and being aware of what all Cherokee Nation tourism has. So they provided a bus and a tour guide and our people went and looked at all, at like tourists. They rode around on a bus for a while to see what all is available there. Uh, and Rob Darty's group, the CCO, provided us with people to do training in public speaking and customer service because in the tourism-related industry, we have to know how to talk to people and what the message is. And also, they have uh, recently provided the funding for us to put in a new server. Ours was going down. It did go down, and we were within a week of the warranty to get it, so it could go down again at any time. So we wanted to especially thank CCO for uh, being a partner with us to make sure that we have the technology available to continue our operations. And finally, one of the things I'm really proud of, our genealogy department has put together a uh, workshop that's going to be in June, uh, be hosted by and at the facilities of the Chickasaw Nation with their library to do genealogical research. We all use the Dawes Rolls for uh, trace direct lineal descent. Uh, so we met in, I think, October with representatives from all of them to talk about what are the needs, what do we need to know, what would support the registration departments when somebody shows up and says, hey, I'm part Cherokee, I want you to prove it. Well, it don't quite work that way. But since we all use the Dawes Rolls, there are other historical records. So the Intertribal Council did pass a resolution endorsing our workshop, and we're, we are now in the process and have been for some time of identifying uh, <coughs> speakers who will come and talk to the history, the records, the documentation, where you can find it, how you can do it. Uh, it'll be a tremendous service. And the Creek Nation has already donated $500 to support of our efforts. So, uh, you know, if there's a, a notion by the council or anybody that wants to get involved in this research and this presentation of the workshop that we're having down there, uh, it'll be posted on our website so you can get the full details of it. But uh, Jean uh, Norris and Ashley Van have done an absolutely phenomenal job of identifying the speakers and the issues so that uh, we can work with people who want to do their actual family histories. They do a phenomenal job there. And they're all, uh, they're, you, you give them a name and they can tell you who all they're related to. And to this day, and it still amazes me, with 300,000 people, you'd think after a certain point, people would know everybody they're kin to, but there'll be people come in doing research on the opposite sides of the table, looking some up, and then they found out they were cousins while they were sitting there. So, you know, that's really an, an, an interesting thing. But as Ashley says, our role there is to help them identify and do their family histories not to, and this is uh, one of the points that we want to make sure everybody understands, is that we're not stepping in or representing the registration departments because citizenship requirements is a whole separate issue. So we're working with and doing, and it's, uh, as you all know, the number one activity of everybody now is uh, doing family research and genealogy. So I'll entertain any questions, and if you have items on budgets, ask Cheryl. <coughs> <laughs> I have a comment. Yes. When when you have the 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 June gathering you're talking about. Yes. Um, uh, give us a cost on on what you know what that's oh, going to okay. be, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see if we can't uh, interject some funds into that because when you mention the Heritage Center, then you're 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 talking about us. I mean, even though it's a separate entity in a way, right. then we're not a separate entity. Right. Uh, so let us know what, what it is, what kind of budget that you're looking at. 
I have something to you real soon on that. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Councilor Crittenden. Doctor, what's the latest conversations, if any, about the, the amphitheater? And if not the amphitheater, maybe something similar? Uh, there's, there's lots of people uh, looking for things to do, uh, you know, in the evenings. And I think that would be a good draw. And if I think it would be a, it would open up a lot of things, not, not only for a production like we used to do. Of course, that would be a, the main thing, but uh, that could open up a monthly schedule of different showcasing of, of Cherokee talents or, or whatever. Just what's the latest conversations on? Uh, that's the number one question I get is when are you going to open the Trail of Tears drama again? Uh, we have had extensive discussions. I've met with the, um, well, Barbara McAllister and the head of the Tulsa, um, what is it, not the Philharmonic, the Opera. Opera. And, you know, we're looking at performing arts and stuff. I have had contact with some people who are interested in helping uh, raise the significant amounts of money it would take to renovate. Uh, you know, I think we're going to, there has been a, a number of studies done on the amphitheater and what it would cost to fix it back up or, you know, what we can do. We need to look at the markets. But I really think we need to begin looking at through the essential community facilities what we can do to fix that, renovate it, to make it a place where we can have um, a number of different types of performances and not just you know that was strictly the trail of tears and it was for a short amount of time it needs to be a venue for other types of uh, for example with the uh, gospel singing uh, other types that could come in and we could have venue there for fundraising activities we could have things there that the, the purpose of it is to entertain the public for activities but it also raises revenue to go support our mission so we are taking a serious look at that and I do, I do have but I can't because of confidentiality at present uh, discuss in public but it is a significant contribution right. so renovations one avenue right and of course I know you probably discussed uh, you know just something to build on the uh, stage right maybe some wooden benches to start with and yes uh, so yeah we, we need something in the short run which would be uh, and I'd like to make it, uh, although it would be a temporary facility for that purpose, it would have other uses at a later time. Thank you. Yeah. That's a part of our land use management plan. Kenneth Foster's arranged for the guy that has the drone to come around and do uh, still shots and all so we can have a full aerial view and begin to strategically locate things, not just put them somewhere because they'll fit. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I got a comment. Yeah, um, yes. Um, go ahead, Councilor. Um, thank you for the good work you do. And, and I've, I've been impressed with all the changes you're, you're trying to make or improvements. Um, my suggestion, or maybe it just could be open for discussion, is I, I travel Interstate 40 and then I, uh, the Turner Turnpike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see a whole lot of promotion. Now, number one, I know advertising, uh, I was talking to Molly Jarvis, it's ridiculously high. But um, we have so much in this area. And yes, we're, um, I think we're 46 minutes from the interstate, through right. Muskogee and then from Tulsa. And I don't see anything. And, I, and perhaps because I like to see paper, I, you know, I like advertise, I have to see. So, but, um, if you're traveling I-40, which it's, you know, coast to coast, mm -hmm. and many people do, you know, I, if, I think if they could see, like, maybe some advertisement, not advertisement, but maybe just, um, the, I, if you're not from this area, I don't, you don't know a whole lot about the Cherokee Heritage Center, and it's right. a wonderful place, or even Tahlequah, the museums. Mm -hmm. Case in point, I had a friend. Um, they're in the process of adopting a baby, and they visited here because they live in, in, in Oklahoma City, and they visited here, and they were just amazed at the museums, you know, mm -hmm. just Tahlequah, just Tahlequah itself. But um, I know, I, I've even talked to Sean Slate about 
you know, the Hard Rock. We, there was no advertisement. I think there's there are, there's one on I-35 now. I think there are two. Mm -hmm. um, but it, and um, if you're a gambler traveling 35, you know I-35. I mean, you know, you go to Tulsa, or you go to you can go to uh, Windstar. You know, and uh, if you're coming to Tulsa, you can go to River Spirit because they have a nice. So I guess my point is, um, in the future, maybe like um, you could put into your budget. Let us. We're not. I just don't know if we're promoting. You know, it, is that, I, I don't. You know what I'm saying? Because we have a wonderful thing to offer. It, it's just. It's. It's not like it. If we're trying to make this a world class, you know, venue. Mm -hmm. And I. And I really think we could learn from the Chickasaws. And I do. You know. I'm in the position where I hear it every day. I see it every day, you know, because they promote and they advertise. And I know they spend a tremendous amount of money. But um, I would like to, I would like for Cherokee Nation maybe to, you know, expand, you know, maybe a little bit more advertising or more uh, promoting our Heritage Center, just, just, just our beautiful area here. And, and like I said, if you, do, if you know this area, if you're from this area, you know about it. Right. But if you're traveling through, and um, so maybe, <clears throat> would you take that into consideration, maybe? Right. One of the things we've done is... I know is, it takes money. It, I know yeah. that's the first thing. <laughs> uh, we've talked to uh, Molly and them about the uh, tourism conferences they go to and how we advertise in those locations. But you're exactly right about Interstate 40. It is the most heavily traveled east-west interstate in the country, and there's no reason we don't have... You know, first thing we've got to do is have good, better roads, but <laughs> that's a separate issue. Uh, yes, Dr. Gord, uh, I think it's about three years ago I asked the uh, architect group, Childers, to do uh, uh, an assessment of that place, the amphitheater, mm -hmm. to rebuild or build a new. And you might, I don't know if we still have that copy, and I'm, I'm not sure I shared it with the council. I thought I did, but if not, maybe Gail has. If not, they're on Main Street there, on Muskogee, and I'll get another copy. Two years ago, during the State of the Nation, I was being a little bit ornery, and uh, they asked me to say a few words during the State of the Nation. One of the comments I made was, my daughter being a performing arts major, I said, you know, what we need to do is revitalize the Trail of Tears drama. Stay the nation. And I think it got the loudest applause. Mm -hmm. So there's a hunger for that, like Councilman you know, Critton said and Councilor Hatfield. It probably needs to be a little bit more diverse this time to a whole other venues there. Um, like you said, the gospel saying, and we have this uh, non Yehi Nancy Ward story that comes up every, every, every year. And 20 years ago, when you were in it, or I'll go a little bit, and when I was in it, we didn't have many Native Americans that were actually trained in that field. Right. Times have changed. We have more Native Americans that, that are into that field and performing arts and even producing and directing. So I think now we could put on those type of performance and create opportunities, jobs for our youth that are really instrumental now in, in, in in presenting our word and how we see it. In years past, we had non-tribal members write the books, write the stories. Uh, mm -hmm. My, 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 my third, first time I turned on the TV and thought I saw a Native American was in Daniel Boone, Mingo. And everyone <laughs> said, wow, there's an Indian there. I said, well, Rob Darty and I could play that part. <laughs> but anyway, my point is, this is a different day Mm -hmm. We have more tribal members that, that are into that area. And I, I really appreciate you looking into that and, and looking at the opportunities to revitalize that, that venue again. Right. But get with Childers. I'll see if I can't make contact. Just let you have a peek on you know, their recommendation. Well, that That's just be, one recommendation. That would be tremendous because yeah. uh, we're with, I think next year is the 50th anniversary of the and which makes it eligible for placement on the National Register of Historic Places and stuff. So, you know, that, that is a part of mm -hmm. the complete story that we need to tell, and I, I really believe one of our deficiencies is the performing arts because, you know, we have a, a lot of the things that have to do with the ancient village, with Adams Corner and the museum. That's all what's in the past. 
And one of the things and a part of the message we need to be delivering is what Cherokees are doing today. What are our accomplishments in all of the areas, in the, the performing arts and storytelling, even the puppet shows. I thought that was really cool. So, you know, if we could get something going along that line. But I really appreciate that. And, you know, that needs to happen. Without a doubt, we need to do something to uh, revive and bring that uh, that art form back. So I I think it's possible. I really do. I do. Yeah. I, I would like to make a couple of comments, and um, I really do appreciate what you have done since you've gotten this job. I mean, just just the things you talk about are awesome, and we all love that place. And I grew. I was a little kid when I first went there. It was a pile of dirt when mom and dad took us when they were digging the amphitheater. Um, I'm aging myself, but I wanted to also commend you for redoing the Trail of Tears exhibit. It, it definitely needs to be redone, but I do have one tiny request. You know, the wall of the clay beads, my mother and I got to help make those, as well as other artists, I'm sure, in the nation got to help make those. So I'd like you to preserve at least part of that if you can. Yes, yes. And, and note that, you know, that maybe list some people that, that we could find that that were notable that are gone that did help make those beats because it was just a it it warmed my heart to be able to get to do that with my mom and she's been gone over five years now um, and I do like your maintenance uh, way of doing things I think that that's a, a wonderful uh, attribute to take care of what we have until we can yes. see a need to replace something right I wanted to mention to you my father helped build the amphitheater he worked there, so that's that's pretty special. I just I had a twenty million dollars to give you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things that I, I, I've really given, and I, every day I'm going, well, yeah, we need to do that, but as always, we'll do that tomorrow, is to start an alumni association, you know, of, mm -hmm. of all the people. It's, it's incredible. I meet people that, you know, walking down the street in Washington, D.C., I used to work there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's amazing how many people have, that that place has touched at some point in their life, or it's the job they had while they went through through college, so... You know, I think an alumni association, it, it, it's too much of an opportunity to share an incredible wealth, not only of information, but our heritage, because I'm absolutely, totally, completely convinced that we are a unique people on the face of the earth, and we should, and as, as Speaker Bird points out, we need to tell our story, you know, that's, and not, not, not have it designed or put on by somebody else. That's why I want to make sure that as we redesign and do things, that everybody on the council is fully in, informed and involved with it. Well, you have our support, and we thank you. Very good report. Okay, yes. thank you. <clears throat> All right, that's the last report, and we have no old business, no new business. Does anyone have any announcements? If, if not, the next meeting is scheduled for March 29th. So that does give you another month, uh, Dr. Gord, for that report that you mentioned you were going to have ready yes. in February. Very good. Right. We'll have it by then. Yes. All right. Great. Yep. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion. We adjourn. Second. 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 Second.